Hey guys, this is Tech right here. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you what you need to do after setting up your new gaming PC. That is right. So I just built this PC over here for my father and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do to actually get it set up. The first thing we need to do is install Windows 11 with my Jank Windows 11 drive. It's first of all, turn off the PC, take our USB drive. We can either plug into the back port of the motherboard or into the front. Uh, we're just gonna plug in the back to the time being. Just makes the most sense for me. And then that we turn our PC. Once it turns on, it should just load for a second. Then actually notice the thumb drive to install Windows 11 onto your PC. With that though, we're good to go. So we can start installing Windows 11 onto our PC. We're just gonna click install now. Now we don't have a product key right now. I'm not too worried about that. So we're gonna just not mess with that for the time being. We just wanna do Windows 11 home. And I just wanna agree to the terms of service and just do custom install. And then we want to install onto our boot drive. Now, of course, I have my 980 Pro here, so that's the drive I want to install into. Uh, of course, there we're going to delete the drive in itself to clear partitions, and then we're going to reformat that. But if you're installing a new drive on your PC, you won't have to do this step. So we're going to say a uh, new, or we're going to apply. It's going to add, and there we go. So we got our drive right here. So we're going to click next. I actually want to load this absolutely, and then it's going to start installing Windows on your computer. That will be good to go. Okay, Windows is successfully installed, so that's good. So the next thing we wanna do now that we installed Windows, install new drivers for our motherboard. Now, you might not always have to do this for me personally, I just have to do this for the Wi-Fi and stuff. So what we're gonna do is go to support for our motherboard by looking up the name of our motherboard, which is so easy. It should just be, look at the motherboard, it should just instantly pop up. And for us, we're gonna get our drivers. We wanna go to not firmware or BIOS, but just drivers overall. We wanna grab ourselves our LAN drivers for our <laughs> Wi-Fi and also ethernet. So we're just gonna download these and install these. Once our drivers are downloaded, what we wanna do is go to our file explorer, go to downloads, and then we wanna unzip these files. So we're gonna left click on our internet one for the Wi-Fi, then right click on it, click extract all. We're gonna extract this, do the same thing with the Bluetooth. We're gonna left click on this, then right click, click extract all again, just run that like so. And both of these should just instantly open on up so we can install our drivers. So. For the Wi-Fi, what we want to do is, of course, go into the Intel Wi-Fi, go here, go to uh, UWD64, installer, and then we just want to do wireless setup and we want to just run this. Once it starts running, though, it won't usually take too long to install your Wi-Fi driver. It should just be near instantaneous. And then with that, we will have Wi-Fi on our PC, so that's good. Now for Bluetooth, we click uh, the BT driver, go to the Bluetooth, Intel installer, and then we can just run this like so. And then of course we can just repair whatever you need to do with it. For me, I'm just gonna repair it because it's working perfectly fine. I thought it wasn't, but no, it, it's good. It's just because the Wi-Fi wasn't working. Okay, now that we did drivers, next thing we wanna do is enable XMP or just set a RAM speed. So what we're gonna do is right click on our Windows icon, go to reset. And while the PC is resetting, what we're gonna do is mash in the delete key on our keyboard. So this will just take us into the BIOS. And we're just gonna keep doing this for a minute until and it's gonna load. Okay, awesome. So once we're in here, what we're gonna do is enable our RAM speed and set it. We wanna go to F7 or just click advancement up here. Then we're gonna go to uh, OC settings. And when we're in here, we will be able to mess with a few different things. So we can have extreme memory profile. We can enable that, or we can actually set the RAM speed in itself. For time being, we will just enable the XMP profile for our extreme memory. So that way it should load our 52 megahertz for our DDR5 uh, memory. So we'll just exit and save. Now, keep in mind, if you do have 6,000 megahertz, uh, it depends on your RAM. Your RAM might be stable or not stable at 6,000, so you might have to be flexible with it. Best case scenario, you buy 6,000 megahertz RAM, you load up XMP, it just works. Other times, it might just do a black screen. And it does that, that means your RAM's not stable at 6,000. So just try to bounce around and see what works to make it 58 to 56. And then, yeah, you can go from there. But this should just work for us. Now that our PC loaded properly and we didn't get a black screen, what should happen when we send a Windows and go into Task Manager on our bar here and go to Performance. And in Performance, we should go to Memory. We should see it be 52 megahertz. So 52 meaning 5,200 megahertz. Perfect, that's what our RAM speed is ready for. So our XMP, our RAM speed is actually set now, which is fantastic. The next thing we do is GPU drivers, which is pretty much super easy. Looking up GeForce Experience on Google, whatever we want to use. And we're gonna click download. It's gonna install us onto our computer. Once that's downloaded, we can just open this on up and install it. Now that we signed in in GeForce Experience, of course, we just clicked on drivers, check for new updates. Of course, we're gonna install the latest driver for us. Now I've already clicked install already, but we're just gonna do the custom installation for it. And then we should be able to just load this like so. 
and then reset our PC and have the latest drivers for our computer. So this will just usually take a second. We don't need to click anything else here. We, can, we already have a clean install, so we're just gonna click install. With that though, now that the drivers are successfully installed, all we have to do is just reset our PC. And with that, our GPU is good to go. Now that's good. Now we get to the fun part. So we're gonna get into the good stuff. So we're gonna look up Google Chrome. We're gonna add this to our PC for our availability to use. Now we will have to actually uh, download this for our computer because it's not already on here. So we're gonna go to Google Chrome. It's not loading like it normally does automatically. So I'm just gonna manually click it myself and just download it here. I don't know what it was doing. Once that's downloaded, we can go into our file explorer. Downloads, Chrome setup. And we're just gonna run this to have Chrome on our computer. With that though, we now have Google Chrome on our computer, which is fantastic. We're not gonna sign in for the timing. We're just gonna skip all this stuff for the time. And what we're gonna do is first of all, download steam so that way we can actually play games on this computer which is going to be a big thing we want to do especially for game testing uh so we're gonna click install steam of course get the download file fantastic go to a file explorer again refresh our downloads and steam setup we're just going to run this like so and set this up and, and sign in and then, of course, you can download any other game launches you want to. Steam's kind of the one I just normally use. Uh, the other thing we will do is for game testing now. We get to do the other part, which is MSI Afterburner now. And we're going to download this, of course. We're not going to download the beta. We're going to download that. Fox Explore again. We're going to refresh it. And usually we'll take a second. Uh, now, for MSI Afterburner, once it loads on up, we are going to click on MSI Afterburner. The 360 for gamers, we're going to not check. We don't need that. I'm just gonna say yes. Of course, it's gonna ask for what language. Of course, click English, click next, agree. And then we wanna make sure it has MSI Afterburner and River Tuner. These are the only two things you really need. Now, another thing you can get, if you wanna get some like protection for your computer, you can download some free stuff like Malwarebytes. I usually do this just because why not? So I'm just gonna install this for my computer just to be safe, just in case of anything. It was weird my dad messes with, but he's not dumb enough to do anything stupid. I hope. With that though, you're all ready to go to play on your new gaming PC. You've got an XMP enabled, so that we get the most out of your RAM. You got Windows installed, you're all good to go. The only thing you need now is a Windows key. Now, I will have a link down below to a Windows key site that you can get stuff for cheap. And usually it's to spend like 20 or 30 bucks to get a Windows key instead of spending like $100 on a Windows key, which is absolutely ridiculous. You can use that $100 somewhere else or technically you send $70 and you can use that somewhere else like RAM or something completely different like storage. But you get the general gist. I'll throw that down below so you guys can self save yourself some money and use it and invest somewhere else or just pocket it for later. But if you guys did find this video helpful or even interesting, then make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed to some of some future tech content. Because later here, we got a PC built for AM5 building the best budget PC for $800 plus another $700 build and also some other really cool stuff. And especially a dedicated video focused on how to install Windows 11 or Windows 10 from a USB thumb drive. So you don't want to miss out on that, you know what to do. I'll see you for another one, TechGrant out.